Hello everybody. The new B9 mod came out. Um, it's not by the same folks, but it has all the same, more or less all of the same parts, and it's got a lot of really, really great features. So I'm going to show you how to build a heavy space plane here in B9. In the old version of B9, the biggest thing it had going for it was this Saber M engine, which is substantially better than the Rapier engines. The new version of B9 also has a cool feature where these universal body segments, and any segment really, even this, uh, even this cargo bay, can be set up to have any kind of fuel. So I've got a whole bunch of stuff here, and that's true of all of the different kinds because I've also stapled on some B9 fuselages down below and set them up to have monopropellant in them. And they're also a good place to stick my wheel. So, all told, the new B9 has a lot of, of really excellent features, although it's not entirely compatible with all mods, uh, so you'll have to watch out for that. I'm using these Saber M intakes scaled up using Tweak Scale, same with these guys. These are Saber L engines, if you want to say that, but um, basically these have a massive amount of surface area, and they're very, very good when you're running at about a thousand meters per second. However, as you get into the upper atmosphere and your speed keeps going up, these shock cone intakes from the Space Plane Plus mod take over. They're very, very good when you're running at 1500 or 2000 meters per second, and so that's what takes over as you start to move really, really fast. Now this is a very, very front-looking ship. Uh, it's very rare that you see a ship that has wings this far forward. Now the reason for that is because most of it is empty space. It's got, it's got this massive, massive cargo bay. Um, but still, it's going to have an unstable time returning home unless I were to pump fuel uh, forward. We're hitting our operational ceiling at this point, so I'm going to start to tone our, uh, our ascent down with the intent to keep our air at above point 3. Uh, point 2 is about when your engines start to just totally die. Uh, the problem is if you languish at like point 1 or point 05, your engines will keep going, but they'll be firing so weakly that you're probably not making very much headway. I want to get our our intake air back up to point, point 0.2, point 0.25. Uh, I was distracted by talking and I let it drop really very low. A lot of people fear the idea of losing altitude, and the real risk when it comes to losing altitude is it's very easy to start losing a lot of altitude. This doesn't look like I'm losing much altitude, but I am, and it's important to remember that. It's important to keep uh, keep track of, if, if you are losing altitude, you need to be very, very aware that that's going to get out of control very, very fast. And I'm aiming to get up to 1800 surface, or 2000 orbital, before we lose our uh, air intake. What I normally will worry about is, I'll worry about those engines starting to drift away from each other in terms of how much uh, kilonewtons of thrust they're providing. Well, they'll never catch us. We're going 18,000 meters a second. Alright, now we're getting into the true upper atmosphere, and it's time to turn off our support engines to, to preserve as much air as we can and get as much speed as we can out of these engines. But it is, I think, time for the finale. We have a pretty good orbital speed, um, and all we really need to do at this point is get out of the atmosphere. So I'm going to turn back on those outer engines, and we'll immediately flame up into LFO mode. For this, you can just switch to map view. If you do need to get a little bit higher, the best thing you can do is just target the center of your vector, and just push up a little bit like that, and that'll get you a little bit of extra speed in the most efficient way you can manage. But normally, you would want to have some other source of electricity. Uh, I just didn't think to put one in. Turn off our lights, too. So now that we're in space, our effort is to either equalize our orbit or go off to the moon, depending on what we need to do. Let's go ahead and go off to the moon. Alright, well let's go ahead and get ourselves some electricity by opening up our cargo bay doors, because we do happen to have some solar panels on these uh, satellites. And you can see that exposed to the tiny amount of sunlight that we can give them, 
they give us just a tiny amount of electricity and that should keep us around uh, obviously you'd want to do better than that you'd you want to have a source of electricity Plunk. all right let's go ahead and release one of these satellites so these are some simple satellites for the purpose of um, scouting out any kind of deposits that we might need to have. By putting one of these satellites in orbit, I don't have to worry about attaching any kind of scanners to our ships. So I'll switch to the satellite, and let's get out of here. Oh, it looks like we're going to actually bounce off the end here. Uh, bounce, that's fine. So now this satellite is in orbit around the moon. And we can display the carbonate hotspots or whatever. And everything works fine. If I fire here, I should begin to go back towards Kerbin in a relatively fuel efficient manner. Landing on the moon, I could probably do it with my remaining fuel. Um, but we would need to refuel before we could go home if we landed there. And there's nothing on the moon for this particular ship to do, so we'll just go back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch these guys back from closed cycle into liquid fuel, and that'll be super, super important for our ability to land properly. Uh, it looks like we're going to flip out. I don't, think I, I don't think I have any choice here. I don't have any electricity to spare, which is probably why it's happening. Having our engines on will be a big help if we can regain control. We don't actually want to use them for thrust, we just want to use them for electricity and control purposes. So that's what we're trying to do, we're trying to bring our nose down. All right, we are definitely, I think we definitely need to pump the fuel forward. It's just not happening here. It's no biggie if you have to do this. Even if you're in the middle of the air, if you have to do this, it's still fine. The only thing you need to do is make sure that you don't run out of time. <laughs> because obviously if you slam into the ground while you're doing this, you've lost. Alright, so we've got RCS and SAS. It's just a matter of getting ourselves some nice motion in a kind of forward direction here. There we go, there we go. Okay, so we've salvaged this. Just a matter of landing it. Now if you've got something like Ferrum Aerospace installed, all of these rules change. Oh shit. A perfect landing, as as I'm sure everyone will agree. Perfect landing. Ah, see now that's how you land a space plane. And uh, hey, uh, if that's not how you prefer to land them, then maybe try um, not doing it like that. Uh, if you're really worried, you can always use parachutes. Or B9 has air brakes. Those are great too. Just put them in the back of the plane. If you put them in the front of the plane, you'll flip. Well, that's it. I hope you have learned a lot about how to build a space plane.